welcome back to my channel Crafty Bemedi Silver Machine. So for today's video it's a story time about the time that I got followed. I took like months and months for me to film this video because I really needed time to really like kind of like process this whole thing because I was traumatized by this whole experience. So yeah, um first if you are new to the channel you already know don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below. It is free. Literally free. And plus, honey, I know you are quarantined. You got nothing to do. So it's subscribing to my channel won't hurt. And also, do not forget to follow me on my streaming platform. That's Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat. It'll be here on the screen and description box down below for your convenience. And yeah, let's get started. So this happened in February, beginning of February. To be exact, February 8th. Yeah, it happened because... I was doing like delivery it was my first day trying to like do delivery if you guys don't know like grocery deliveries yeah I was trying that for the first time and I had a I had an order in giant right so I went to giant it was like around 6 7 p.m. and you know around February it gets dark it'd be earlier so I went to giant and I got the order and everything so after that I, I, I you know I check out of course and then I walk to my car I see a guy walking towards the giant while i'm walking out so this is me walking towards you know the parking lot going to my car and the guy was going up to the giant so when he saw me he made a u-turn like this and started following me so now like i'm hitting my you know my pockets because i had a like jacket and i had my keys in there i'm hitting it and i grab my keys i press you know my button to open my car and then the guy is right behind me he's like hey and i'm like hey at this point, I'm at the door of my car. I open the door, and he keeps coming, like, so close to my car. Now he's, like, right by my car. So I'm like, do I know you? He said, maybe, yes, maybe, no. Bruh, like, I, I, like, first of all, I was like, what, is, like, what in the world? He looked like he was, like, in his, like, mid-30s. So I'm like, I know them well that I don't know this guy from anywhere. So what does he mean? So I'm like, oh, okay. So I hop in my car. Like, I literally, like, hop in my car, close the door, put my key, you know, ready to... I start my car, actually. And then this guy knocks the window of my car. And then he's like, put this put this window down. So I'm looking at the, win the, the guy through the window like, are you serious? And I'm like, I got to go. I'm rushing. And he's like, oh, you Russian? He thought this thing was a joke. He's like, you Russian? I'm like, I'm rushing. And then he wanted to be funny and say, you rushing? And because, you know, he was talking so loud that I could hear him in my car. And that's how, how close he was to my car. So I could hear everything he was saying out there. And then I'm like, okay, I got to go. So I, now I, put, I move my car from park to drive. And then he's, he, he knocks my window again and he said, I said, put this window down. Now he's like, he's so serious. And I'm like, oh my God, I got to go. So I look. Like, he was putting his key to, like, hooking it. You know the, how guys be hooking the keys to their pants? He was trying to do that. So, my eyes went, you know, on his belt um, thing. So, I'm looking, and I see, like, next to it, I see, like, something bulky. And to this day, I still believe it was a gun. I'm going to tell you guys, watch. Just listen. You're going to know why I think it was the gun. Wait. So, I see something bulky. I'm like, what is going on, like? You know in my head of course and i'm like, know so i got scared so i just pressed the gas boom i'm driving off as i'm driving off he tried to kick the back of my car but he misses that's how fast i was going right and then i ended up you know instead of driving up going to my left i went to my right but whole time the exit was to my left but he was right there so i couldn't turn there so as i'm going down to my right i like there's no road there of course so i have to like maneuver my way out to go back up you know I thought the guy was gone right cuz I couldn't see him so I was like oh my god yes thank you Jesus I couldn't see the guy next you know I'm driving to the person I was supposed to deliver this item to whole time I'm not really thinking anyone is following me of course so I'm just like okay who that was such a crazy guy let me just keep it moving so as I'm going you know I didn't see anybody following me like Cause you know when someone follows you you kind of like have that feeling and normally like my gut feeling be talking to me so much so i feel like if it was the case i could have like been like okay that car is following me nothing like that and you know it was already a bit dark outside so my light went on and there was no light behind me that's how i knew no one was behind me or i thought no one was behind me 
And then I kept going and I got to the, the person lived like five minutes away from the giant that I was at. And I get to the person house. I missed the entrance of the house. So now I get in someone else's garage, someone that I don't know. I get in the garage trying to maneuver my way out. As I get in the garage, a car blocks me right from the back. Like he blocks me right from the back. And I look at my rearview mirror, he put his high beam on. And then I look and now I see the guy in the car. He opens the door and comes out of the car. Mind you, he's having like an on still. And then I'm like, what the hell? Like in my head, I'm like, what is going on? So I panic, obviously. I'm scared. I'm a female. And it's later now I'm by myself. So I'm scared. And then I promise to you guys, I saw a gun on the other hand. Like one of his hands was like this. And then the gun was like this. Okay, this is exactly what I saw. And I know what I saw. So as he was going like this coming towards me and I see the gun on the other hand, the only thing I could do is get on the lawn. Because that person's lawn looked nice that day, but I had to get on it, drive over it to get away. That was my only way or else I was going to have to drive in the garage. And I don't want to, you know, own nobody because of someone crazy behind me. And I was going to be stuck anyway. So I literally drive, luckily... The person lawn had enough space for me to squeeze in and I almost hit a tree because there was a tree by right there by the lawn. So uh, luckily I squeezed in and I went through it. And then I kept going. I'm just speeding. This man goes back, hop in his car, and he starts following me full speed too. Mind you, I'm in a neighborhood that I've never been in before, so I don't know where to go. So I just start making turns anyhow, anywhere, thinking I'm finding my way out to the road or somewhere like i was just like okay hopefully there's a road somewhere so i'm just going fast and then this guy keep following me and then i end up on i think the color could sack where it's like this like a half circle and there's nowhere to go there were just houses around oh my goodness gracious i'm like what in the world and then now you know the could sack is like this it's like a half circle now he, he parks like this so i'm stuck now i'm stuck so i maneuver my way out and now my car is looking at his car be like his car is facing like this and now this is my car now i'm looking at his car like this the you know the craziest thing hits my head and tell me run this guy over like just drive to like just hit his car and just keep going and then i'm like oh my god what am i gonna do luckily i had a first instant to I know I should have called the police. I know. I know you're going to chew me up in the comments and tell me you should have called the police. Yeah, but at least I had a, something in my head that told me, call your friend Barbie because I was just on FaceTime with Barbie telling her about this crazy guy. Right when I left, that's how much y'all know that I was like, who? I FaceTime my girl. I'm like, girl, I just like um, got out of the giant and this crazy guy trying to talk to me and stuff like that. And then he had audacity to touch my window. So literally, I'm telling her the story. And then I'm like, she's like, you lying, girl. I'm like, no, I'm not. So when I'm like, okay, I got to get off the phone because I was using my GPS. So, I, so as, as I hung up the phone, that's when I pulled up to, the, you know, I missed that exit because of that. I was on the phone, yeah. You know, don't drink, don't, don't, don't drive and talk on the phone. Don't do that. So that's how I missed the, the entrance of that, of that house. And now I had to get in that other garage to do my maneuver my way out. And then, boom, the guy came behind me. That's how that happened. So I'm like, oh, my God, let me FaceTime her again. So I'm FaceTime my friend. She's like, just saying, call the police, drive to my house. Like, get out of, of that of that, of that that situation. I'm like, how? He's literally blocking me. So she's like, you know, take his license plate. I'm like, I can't because the car is parked like this. And I'm like this. Literally, this is me, and the car is blocking me like this. And I'm like, I, there's no way, like, I can't do anything. So she's like, just like, like, try your best to see his license plate. Now, he was parked like this, right? I guess he saw that no one was moving. I wasn't moving. So he moved his car, and now his car is facing my car like this. Both of our front, like, front of our cars are facing each other, right? But not touching, but facing each other. And then my friend's like, Get the license plate. So, mind you, everything that is going on, I'm telling her. She's like, get the license plate. So, I'm like, okay, cool. I'm trying to take a picture of it. On I'm on FaceTime. It didn't work. So, I'm like, okay. It's 4ACDA. Like, I'm trying to read. But whole time, you know, it's, it's late. And he has his high beam on. So, I'm trying to read. 
And then I think he saw he saw that I was trying to like my phone was up. He probably thought I was trying to take a picture. Whole time I was trying to text my friend the license plate. He turns off his light. Now like I can't see. And the car was a dark car. Well, I think it was black. So either black or dark gray. So at this point I can't see anything. And I'm telling my friend I'm like Barbie. I can't see anything like this guy turned off his light and then she's like oh my god just saying call the police so as she's telling me to call the police I see now the guy is moving from being like this you know he, he's fr the front of his car face in mine he's not coming to the side so now I'm acting like I'm telling my friend I'm, I'm about to act like I'm having a conversation with him and see what he wants right so I'm trying to press my button to pull my, my um, window down from that side and my button is literally pressed, like, I'm literally pressing the button of the back window. So I guess he saw that I was trying to have a conversation finally. So he just, like, we stared at each other for a long time. Whole time I'm trying to find that button, the front, the front window one. I'm literally pressing the ones, like, the, the windows at the back. I, I did the left one and the right one. I, like, I had a hard time finding the one at the front because I wasn't looking. You know, it's, it's dark and I'm scared. Like, I was shaking. It was, it was bad. Like, it was terrible. And then he's, he now goes to Parallel Park. I guess the man thought I was going to wait for him to do that little Parallel Park. No, honey. No, creepy. No, crazy. I just went. Boom. I just kept going. And now at this point, I'm, hung, I'm telling my friend, I got to hang up the phone and put your address. Because she lives, she didn't live that far from where I was delivering the stuff. I'm like, I'm not delivering these things by myself. And then my friend is like, okay, drive to my house. And as I'm putting my friend's address, now I'm realizing that my mom literally live also five minutes away from where I was. So I'm like, what's the point? So I'm calling my older sister, right? She, she's like, okay, come to mom's house. You know, I'm there and I can go with you to deliver this. So I'm like, okay, cool. I go to my mom's house. My sister was on her way to my mom's house. She wasn't home yet. She wasn't home yet, but she told me she was there just because she wanted me to come there because she could tell I was scared. And then she's like, no, don't worry. I'll be there in 15 minutes. Just give me some time. I just wanted you to be home, you know, and be safe and stuff like that. I'm like... I need to deliver this order. It's literally my first day. That's how I remember the day of this this whole crazy stuff. Because it was my first day ever doing those, you know, delivery stuff. So I was like, no, like it doesn't look good on me. And then I'm like, I'm gonna go pick up Barbie. My sister is like, wait for me. I'm like, I'm coming back with Barbie. So now I'm on my way. I hate, I, I go to I, put, I go to Barbie's house. I call her. Barbie crazy self comes out with a huge knife. I'm talking about like a huge, thick, long knife. I'm like, what were you gonna do? She was like, I was gonna mess up his car if he was still following you. I'm like, girl, this man had a whole gun. How are you gonna stand a gun and a knife? Like, we know already who is dying, we know who is losing. So I told her that. She started laughing. She was like, just said, nah, like, I could tell, like, you were panicking so much that I just had to grab any and everything. And then I was like, okay, cool, let's go to my mother's house. So I went to my mother's house. And then my, we got my sister in the car, and then we went to that neighborhood again because I had to deliver the stuff. So we went and delivered the stuff at the person's house. We dropped it off. Cool. And then I'm like, can we drive around a little bit to see if I can see his car because I really need to get that license plate because I'm reporting this to the police. So my sisters are cool. Barbie's like, cool. So now we're driving around. We're looking, and of course, we couldn't find his car. And first of all, we couldn't find his car. And secondly... I couldn't even remember where, like, because I was taking so many turns, I couldn't remember exactly where I was. So I couldn't even find that cul de sac where he was trying to do his parallel parking. Because I was telling my sister, I was like, maybe he lived there. Like, he was like, wow, she want to talk to me. And actually, I'm in my neighborhood. Let me parallel park, you know, because there was a car right there. He couldn't just, you know, just slide in. He had a parallel park because there were cars right there. And then, um,. I couldn't find that place. I, I literally couldn't for the life of me. Couldn't. And I was like, I need to come here during the day and try to find it. Maybe he would be parked around. And still nothing. Literally nothing. So, yeah. The next day, I went and I reported it to the police. Because, like, I really, I really, was it the next day or two days later? It happened on the Saturday. I reported it on the Monday. Two days later, actually. Because I really needed to process it. Like, it was still so fresh in my mind. I couldn't believe it happened. So, yeah, I went and I reported it to the police at, you know, my job, because where I work, there's a police officer right there. You know, I reported it to him. He sent me to the station in Germantown. I went there, and these people tell me they were on the staff that day, unless I go back to the giant where it happened and call 911. They would send an officer for me 
to like go and look at the camera with that officer so I can point the guy out and he was like and plus the cameras at the giant are not the best quality so you probably won't be able to find or see the um, license plate of his car in my head I'm like this is exactly why I didn't want to report it like this is exactly why because I knew some crazy stuff was gonna happen they weren't gonna help me and I would be mad so I told that officer exactly this I said because I saw him pressing his little camera he, he thought I didn't know he was recording me I said you see, this is why females like me have things happening to them and they don't like reporting. I literally dead ass told the officer that I was like, for things like that, I'm here because I was actually told to come here because I needed like at least a couple of days for me to like really like pro process all these, these things that happened to me. And now I come to report it and you guys are telling me, you guys are understaffed and all this and that the third like... I came here for no reason technically and then he's like, I'm sorry, I apologize. I'm like, it's cool. You know what? Next time things like this happen to me, I will not report it. Thank you for making me feel that way. Like, sometimes, man, like, these officers are really trash. Like, I have an officer at my job. I love him so much. Like, he's great. But sometimes these other officers, they really, like, need, like, more training. Because I'm like, you're telling me something, you, like, you are understaffed. Okay? Like, find a way, like... Let's go to the giant. The giant wasn't far from the police station anyways. So I was even thinking, I was like, if I knew that it was that close, I was going to drive to the police officer, uh, uh, the police station right after the thing happened to me. But like I said, I was under shock. I, I wasn't even thinking like that. But yeah, like the station was literally like 8 to 10 minutes max from where the whole incident happened, from where the giant was, from where the, the, the guy followed me and all those things. So I'm like... We could have literally just just went together and then we checked the cameras. But, you know, some officer don't want to do their job. So I went back to my job. I told my officer what that officer said. And he was like, that's crazy. But don't worry. Next time it happens, just go to the nearest station. Or next time it happens, do your best to, like, literally report it right away. Call 911. And then, you know, he started telling me about all these things. And I was like, you know, when those type of things happen to you, you don't really think about 911 right away, you know? Like, you're so scared. Like, you don't think about all those things. Like, yeah. So... That was it. After that, I went home. I dropped off my friend Barbie. I went home. And, yeah, I got home. Jordan was really sad. He was really mad. And he was upset. Like, he was in the best of mood. He was like, you know, what does he look like? Like, he was trying his best to, like, help me remember what he looked like. I was like, he looked like he was in his 30s. He was African-American, skinny, a bit taller than me. He could have been, like, six foot. Like, I tried to describe him, but, you know, we really couldn't do much with it anyway. So, I was like, I never see the guy in my life, so... I hope I don't see him ever again. And he kind of looked like he was in some, like, deep, heavy drugs. That's also another thing I wanted to mention. He looked like he was high as a kite. So, I don't know. Maybe that, type of, that drug he was in got him to do these things. But I still don't want to give an excuse because that's not okay. It's never okay to follow anybody. It's never okay to, like, you know, try to talk to somebody because they say, no, you curse them out. It's never okay. Like, what? Anyways, guys, that's it for today's story time. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to comment down below. If any of these crazy type of stuff ever happened to you, whether it's someone following you or someone cursing you out because you refuse to talk to them, anything crazy like that, let me know in the comments down below. You guys know we're on confinement. We'll be chatting up. We'll be talking. So, yeah, also follow me on my streaming platform. That's Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat. It will be in the, in the description box down below. Once again, if you are new to the channel, if you're the first time seeing my face, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below so you can get notified every, every single time I upload a new video. And also, do not forget to turn on the bell. Do not forget to turn on your notification bell so you can get notified every single time I upload a new video. And if you're a returning subscriber, you already know it's all love. I love you so much and thank you for your support. And yeah, I'll catch you guys on my next one. Bye.